good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. May God bless you during this almost end of the week. Today is Thursday, February the 4th, and we are glad to be able to come to you once again, like we do every, every Thursday, to be with you and share the word of Jesus himself. My name is Pastor Mendes, and joining me today is uh, Pastor Ensel Brown. Pastor, how are you doing today? I am doing well. Praise the Lord. It's good to get back and to see all of you. And I'm sure that we are excited about the study of this evening. It's God's law of love. I wonder what that is. Amen. You know, today we're going to be studying the interesting, the interesting law of love. Because many people say that, you know, law means rules and rules are boring. But we will see how is it that God turned those rules into beautiful love. So before we begin, I'm going to ask everybody if you could please bow your heads as we go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, so much for this beautiful day. As we are about to begin, we want to ask you that you may please bless us as we will be sharing your law of love. Lord, please be with us at this time and that your Holy Spirit may be uplifted, that it may guide us, and that, Lord, that we may see your Son, Jesus, in His, in your holy name. Amen. Amen. So, Pastor, God's law of love. You know, when I was younger, I started growing up and I started walking and I remember that my mom was very happy because I was able to walk and go from one place to another. And they were excited, you know, that I was able to move. But then I started messing around with some stuff, some stuff in the bed, some stuff in the living room. And then I found out that not everything should be moved and that I can't go to every place. But why is that? Why do we have to have those rules and that order? You know, uh, as you said, you started growing, but you did not know what was good and what was bad, what was dangerous and what was harmless. And so your parents knew what was dangerous. Your parents knew what would harm you. It's just like uh, telling a child not to play in the streets because mm -hmm. if, if you play in the streets, there's a great possibility that a car could come along and you could get hurt. So mm -hmm. laws are put in place in our society to, pro to protect the individuals in the society. You know, in the United States alone, there are thousands of laws that are there to keep the, the populace, so to speak, within the framework of what the government deems is best for the people. And so we have to abide by that, like even driving a car. If we're in a 35 mile an hour zone, we have to stay within that. Once we stay within those frame, the framework there of the law, we're okay. But if we go beyond that, because mm -hmm. maybe we are driving in, a, in, a, in an area where we have a lot of houses with children, it's better to drive slowly than to drive fast. So laws are there to protect us. And God has given us 10 laws. The United States have over 3,000. Mm -hmm. God has given us just 10. And if we abide by those 10, uh, we will, won't have any problems. Amen. So, Pastor, you have, you have stated today that God gave 10 laws. Yet, where did those laws come from? You know, is there a judicial branch over there in heaven? You know, is there a bunch of angels with a bunch of wigs and hammers dictating what the law is, what is not? You know, wrote that law. All right, let's look at Exodus 31, verse 18, uh, and see where and from whom that law came. Exodus, Exodus 31, 18. And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon the Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. So who wrote the Ten Commandments? God himself ah. wrote the Ten Commandments. He wrote it with his mm -hmm. own fingers, the Bible tells us. So therefore, if he wrote it with his, ten, uh, with his own fingers, it means that it means a lot to him. Amen, amen. Now, you know, most of the laws, most of the laws, uh, 
have consequences. And we, 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 we symbolize or almost, it's almost a parallel that consequences are mostly negative. But they're also, you know, consequences just means the result. So they yes. are also positive consequences and negative consequences, you know. But what is the consequence or what is the promise that God gave to those who follow his commandments? What was that promise, you know? Yo, we have to remember that God is a God of love. And so whatever he does, it's for our benefit. And Psalm 112, Psalm 112, 1 to 3. Psalm 112, verses 1 to 3. Right, you have you could, one and two on screen. Read that, yes, the Bible reads, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generations of the upright shall be blessed. And verse 3 says, Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. So when we abide by the commands that God has given to us, the text here is telling us that it will be well with us. Mm -hmm. uh, it says we will have riches, we'll have wealth, uh, we'll have many blessings. But some people tend to think that uh, here it's a prosperity gospel, that uh, once we keep God's commandments, it's going to make us millionaires. But that's mm -hmm. not what it's saying. This wealth is a wealth of God's presence, God's holiness with us because, and it prepares us for that day when we will walk on the streets of gold. So mm -hmm. abiding in God's commandments now will be a positive experience, gives us a better lifestyle, a better give us better opportunities and, uh, and not only for the present, but for the future. Pastor, let me ask you something. You are a man that went to school for several years and you had a, a, a dissertation at the end of your degree. For me, yes. I didn't have a dissertation, but I had some final projects. Now, what was the, the, the final page of your dissertation, the final page of my uh, thesis of a class or something had to have a conclusion, you know? And it was a conclusion of a subject of... Uh, you know, uh, for example, mine was on the city of Thessalonica, and I can bet that yours was something very interesting that, you know, probably took hours and hours and hours to get to that conclusion. But Solomon, the wisest king on all of the earth, after studying for weeks and months and years, came to one conclusion. You know, Solomon, the Bible says he was wise, in biology. He was wise in anatomy. He was wise, you know, in, in, in astrology, physics, in astrology, physics and math, yes. all the sciences, all the sciences. What was that conclusion that he came to at the very end of his studies? It is very interesting, the conclusion that Solomon came to, because as you said, Pastor, he, he was given wisdom, not by man, but by God himself. So he was an all-around genius. Have yes. you ever met a genius? He was an all-around <laughs> genius. And no, not really. he was exposed to so many different things. Mm. And looking at, and he experienced, uh, you know, just wealth. He experienced uh, joy. He experienced uh, many things. And uh, looking back at his life in the last few days, in Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14, Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14, he came to this conclusion. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Number one, he says, the whole the conclusion is that we need to fear God mm -hmm. and we need to keep his commandments. And this fearing of God is not being afraid of God, but it is having an awe of who God is and a respect God for who he is as create and redeem of us all. So the, the thing we should do is Fear God, be respectful of who God is, be in awe of who God is. And number two, we should keep his commandments, be obedient mm -hmm. to his commandments. For this, he says, is the whole duty of man. For God, then he goes on to make a statement. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So if we say that we are 
not going to follow God's command. We hide behind everybody and we're doing the bad things. And we, we're thinking, hey, I'm getting away with this. But here he's saying that every th secret thing, everything, whether it's good or evil, will come to light. And so the conclusion is fear God, be in awe of who God is, love him, uh, be obedient to him, and keep his commandments. Amen. You know, it, it's wonderful to hear uh, God praising all of these uh all of these saints, you know, because they, they were very smart people who even though of their knowledge and regardless of the years of study, they still realize and they still acknowledge God is the one who gave me this. Therefore, God is wisest. And whatever he says, I should follow. So, Pastor, there was another very interesting wise man in his regard and his name was David. We know him as King David. You know, and God had a very interesting description about him. Fun fact, the father of Solomon. What did God say about him? Yes, let's look at Acts 13, 21 and 22. Acts 13, 21 and 22. All right. The Bible reads on Acts 13, 21 and 22. And afterward, they desired a king. And God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of 40 years. And then he had removed him. He raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom he also he gave their testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who shall fulfill all my will. That's an awesome statement. He's yes. a man after God's own heart, and he will fulfill all of God's will. If you remember the prayer of Jesus uh, when he taught his disciples how to pray, he said, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in mm -hmm. heaven. God's will is perfectly followed in heaven. The angels follow him perfectly. Everything is in order in heaven, but on earth it's not so. But here God found a man. <laughs> and David made some mistakes, but when he came to God, he's, he, he harmonized his will with God's will. And that's where God wants us. We may have made mistakes just as David made mistakes. If we look at the story of David, we see that he made some perfect. mistakes in his life. Yeah, he was not perfect. By he all. was not perfect. But when he humbled his heart to God, he gave everything and he was uh, com obedient to every will of God. And that's where God wants us. And I'm happy that the Bible tells us the good points as well as the bad times of these great men of God to show us that even in our weakness, even in our frailty, we too can get to the place where God can say, uh, he follows my will. Implicit. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, Pastor, we we see here, and you know that is one of the things that I that I like to tell everybody. You know, as long as God has my acknowledgement, you know, as as long as I have God's acknowledgement, I'm sorry. God is the one that gives me the one. Then who yeah. cares about the other ones? You know, because if you think about it, how many people in the Bible have acknowledgements? Very few. Exactly yeah. from what we have David. I can think of Job, probably. I can think and of... He's, I, uh, um, oh, I was yeah. Enoch, was it? Enoch, so, yes, yeah. Enoch, Enoch yes, 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 yes. Enoch, of yes. Enoch. So, and, and so many so many few of them had yeah. Moses, of course, and but... And John the Baptist. John the Jesus Baptist. Said he was the greatest prophet who ever walked. You mm -hmm. know, so. Yes, so, so, many, so few people that have that acknowledgement but we know that when we are in god's side that acknowledgement weighs more than anything now but we see god's acknowledgement about david but what did david think about god um uh, let's look at psalm 9 119 psalm 119 verses 166 to 168 Right? This is one of the one of the long ones out there. But the yes. Bible says in Psalm 119, 166 and 168. 
I have Lord. hoped for thy salvation and done thy commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies and I love them exceedingly. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> mm -hmm. And 168 says, I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies for all my ways are before you. He loves God's testimony. He loves mm -hmm. God's law. He loves God's way. And then he said, Lord, if that's not enough, all my ways are open to you. You know. Mm -hmm. And so because God's eye can see beyond anything. Even in the darkest places, he can see and he knows the recesses of our heart. And David said, look at my heart. You know, you know that I love you. You know that I desire you. You know that I want to be in your presence. It's an awesome thing to, to see. Uh, and, and, and the thing is that obedience is very important to God. You know, that's why he gave us his Ten Commandments. He wants us to be obedient to, to his law. Because it is only his law that can give us life. Only his way can give us life. And so he loves us so much that he wants us to follow him in everything without reservation. And that is what David is saying. I love you, Lord. I want to do everything that is pleasing to you. I love your law. I love your testimony. And you know. I don't even have to say, just look in my heart, Lord. You know. Man, you know, that that's one of the things that David realized and saw this law and acknowledged as well. And probably he even began teaching uh, since birth, little Solomon, you know, you need mm -hmm. to acknowledge God. And that is the principle and the basis to try to teach others and your family how to fear God and keep his commandments. So... Pastor, another interesting person in the New Testament is Paul. You know, he has uh, the most books written in, uh, in the letters of the New Testament. And most of the story of the book of Acts is dedicated as well to him because Luke decided to travel with him, led by the Holy Spirit, more, more than likely. But Pastor, what did Paul say about God's law? Let's look at Romans 7 verse 12. Romans 7 and verse 12. Go ahead. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, just, and good. So here, the, the law of God is holy. Why? Because God is holy. God, the commandments of God, they're holy. And they're just because it's some laws in some countries, they're not just. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're there to benefit certain people. Mm -hmm. Laws are not just. But God's law, the laws are just. And they're good. Some laws in some countries are not good. Mm -hmm. And so, but God is, is the perfect being who loves us implicitly. And so his law is holy, just, and good. And I'm thankful that I have a God like that because I can trust that his judgments will always be right when it comes to me, if I'm faithful, when it comes yeah. to you, if you're faithful. Now, Pastor, let me ask you this because I have heard this a couple of times already. We just heard from Paul that God's law is just and good. But I have heard from many people that in the New Testament, there is no such thing as God's law. You know, we live by grace. We're saved by grace. We, we are now know, you know, that the law was done away with. Did that really happen? You know, did Jesus come and say something about the law? Or did Paul say we should not do this? What happened there? Well, if we don't have a law, there is no sin. If we mm -hmm. don't, if there's not a law that said do not kill. I can kill and uh, there's no law that says that. So I have not done anything wrong. And so if we have abolished the law, it means that there is no sin. That mm -hmm. is just uh, a fabrication from the devil. Because here Jesus in Matthew chapter 5, 17 to 18, did Jesus actually come to abolish the law? Let's listen to what Jesus himself said. Go ahead, Pastor. Matthew. Think not. 
I came to destroy the law. Jesus is talking here. He says, I didn't come to destroy the law. I didn't come to destroy the prophets. And when he speaks about the prophets, he's talking about the, the, the written books of the prophets, like Isaiah, Jeremiah, the minor prophets. So the law, uh, the, the first five books of the Bible, and then we have the prophetic books. So that's what Jesus is talking about. He's talking mm -hmm. about the whole the Old Testament. He didn't come to destroy the, the laws in the Old Testament or the books in the Old Testament. Because some people tend to think that the Old Testament itself as well has been done away with. So he said, I did not come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am come I, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. What does that mean? Well, I came to live and show you that you can live within the framework of the laws that were given in these books. Amen. Because Jesus himself said, when the devil came and looked in me, he found nothing. Jesus never sinned. He walked within the guidelines of the laws of God. And so he did not come to destroy the law. He came to show us how to live within the guidelines of the law. For very I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no, no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So mm. not even a comma, not even a period yes. <laughs> will be taken from the law mm. until all is fulfilled. So the law is still there. Yes, grace is abundant and free. But we have to live, accept God's grace and show him our love for him by being obedient to his law. Amen. Now, let me ask you something, Pastor. Because, uh, you know, there's many people that have this attitude that... Uh, that we should, you know, still, you know, it was done away with, it passed away in the cross. But what did Jesus say about those who broke the law and thought others the same? Thought others the same. Let's look at verse 19. That's the verse right after that. The Bible. Yes. Whosoever therefore shall break any of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, and same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And uh, one, one point of clarification also is that uh, he will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. It not, does not mean that that person is going to be in heaven and he's mm -hmm. going to be in the lowest corner. And those that are obedient, they're going to be in the highest corner. Heaven... Mm -hmm is where God dwells and God looks on those who are obedient and uh, follow his law. And if you, are, you follow your law, God will look and see you as being great. If you are uh, disobedient, God will look and see you as being not great in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. So you will not enter his kingdom if you are disobedient. Yes, one of, the things, one of the things we need to realize for God is that with God, you are or you aren't, you know, yes. there's no mid levels. There's no economy class flights to heaven. No, no, no. It's <laughs> just either you are in first class following his commandments or you did not follow them. And That's right. you're to be, you're going to be the least because some people are going to say, Oh, you remember that guy or, you know, because he did not make it over there. He was not there. So, Pastor, continuing now with this uh, interesting study. You know, Jesus had some more thoughts and some more words about those who follow his word and his commandments. What else did he say? You know, because he, he, he taught a lot about this. Mm -hmm. I just like to hear the words of Jesus as it comes from his mouth. And so Luke eleven twenty eight gives us another picture of Jesus speaking here. Right. Luke eleven twenty eight. Go ahead, Pastor. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Mm -hmm. You know, many hear the word. Many know what is right and what is wrong but they do not keep it. They, they're not obedient to it. So there's a blessing, not for those hearing, but there's a blessing in its obedience. 
obedience to what you have heard. I heard, I go to the doctor, the doctor tells me I have a, an upset stomach and I need to uh, abstain from certain foods and you know, follow certain uh, health guidelines. I heard what the doctor said, but when I went home, I totally ignored what he said. I am not gonna recover. <laughs> But if I heard and I'm obedient to what the doctor said, there's a great chance that I'm going to feel better. And so when we hear the word of God, when he points out to us what is right from what is not right, when he points out to us what God's will is for our lives, then he expects us to be obedient. And the great thing about that as well is that he does not just expect us to be obedient, but he gives us the power to be obedient to his will. Amen. You know, one of the things that I like is, uh, Pastor mentioned that before reading the verse, we like to hear the words of Jesus. Because probably we have not heard God or his voice. You mm -hmm. know, for, maybe we have heard him in the Old Testament. But the people said, we don't want to hear him. Speak to Moses and let Moses speak to us. <laughs> Probably haven't heard God's voice in a long time, but Jesus says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Yes. Therefore, if you hear me, you're hearing his own words. And that is why we, we, we like to hear the words of Jesus, because not only are there his words, but they're also his Father's words. Mm -hmm. so what did Jesus say that we are to do if we love him, Pastor? Ah, uh, John 14. 15, 21, 23, 24, and John 15, 10. We have a few verses to read. All right. I'm going to try to keep up then. <laughs> John 14, 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. John so 14. The so the bottom line is love. Yes. You know, if, if I love my parents, I'm going to be obedient to my parents. Mm -hmm. And I just want to interject a little story here before you read the other verse, Pastor. Because he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. You know, there's this young man who went off to college and he was in the, in the dorm uh, with his dorm mates. And one Saturday night, they planned to go out and to do things that he knew was not right. And he got dressed and was going on, but his conscience was bothering him. And he remembered the love of his father. He remember how he, he, he and his father did things together, how his father would remind him just to stay within the framework of the law. And he, as he was going to walk out the door, he said, I'm not going. And he stayed. His friends went out. They got in trouble. They were expelled. And, you know, bad things happened. What saved him? What saved him? The love of the his father. Of his he father. remembered the love of his father. And he remembered his love for his father, that he did not want to let his father down. Amen. So Jesus is here saying, if you love me, keep my commandments. Or be obedient to me. And it will be well with you. Amen. So it's a love relationship. Definitely. The Bible continues saying now, we're going to verse 21. The Bible says, he that had my commandments and keeps them, he is, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be love of my father. And I will love him and I will manifest myself to him. Amen. On verse 23, Jesus answered and he said unto him, if a man loves me, he will keep my words and my father will love him. Okay. So then this is, this is now okay. that is ongoing. Yes. So we are we loving him, but he also loves us and his father loves us. If we keep his commandments and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. The Bible says on verse 24. Now he that loves me, not not keepeth nor my sayings. He that, let me begin again. He that loves me not keepeth nor my sayings, and he and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. This is an interesting verse, Pastor. What, yes. what tell us here? Yeah. If you don't love, if you don't love Christ, 
you say, if he that loveth me not, um, and you don't he, I, I follow through on the things that he says, uh, you are actually saying not only to Jesus, but to the Father, I don't appreciate you. I don't love you. Because everything that Jesus said while he was on earth was said to him by his Father, and then he said it. Because when he was on earth, he did not use his kingly powers. He did not use his, his heavenly powers. He depended implicitly wholly on his father. And so his father would reveal to him and he would reveal to us. And so if we did not adhere to what he said, well, we are, we are, we are not adhering to what the father said. So we are turning our backs, not on Jesus alone, but on the father. That's, that's that's a very, very interesting comment, you know, because um, and we're probably going to be speaking a little bit more about this uh, later on. But, you know, there is somebody else we can reject, and that is the Holy Spirit. And but we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there eventually. The Bible continues saying now on John 15, 10, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments. I would abide in his love. Amen. You know, that that is, we, we continue seeing this, this, uh, this parallel that we need to love Jesus and we need to love his commandments. And if we do that, the God's blessing will be with us and he will also love us as well. Isn't that and a wonderful thing? Just want to interject here, Pastor, that the law is not a, the law itself is not a method. For salvation rather mm. it is a standard for our christian behavior yes. because the law cannot save us nope. but it is a standard for how we are going to behave as men and women of god if we call mm. ourselves christians then we have to have a certain standard a certain lifestyle a certain way of carrying ourselves going about our business we can't be like the world because jesus himself said in john chapter 17 uh, that ye are not of this world as I am not of this world. But I'm going to leave you in the world. But you can't be like the world. And so the law is, is uh, God's standard of his character. And as we hold on to the trappings of the law, then we are holding on to the character of God. Because the law reflects the character of God. The law reveals God's character, as a matter of fact. Yes. You know, Pastor, let me let me ask you this, because this is probably the question of many people that that will watch this. You know, why why would I want to keep God's law? You know, uh, why would I do it? Why would I want to do it? You know, yeah. what, is, uh, what is the response? Yeah, go ahead, Pastor. What is the response? of someone who is not following God's law and does not want to follow it. You know, that a sinful uh, mind uh, response. What would somebody say on that? You know, as you start, when we started the study, you talked about when you started walking and you started doing certain things. Your mother mm -hmm. may have said, don't do this, but you're so curious. You want to go touch something you shouldn't touch or, you know, sit on Knock something. Knock something over. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was there. I was there. <laughs> you know, there are many people in our world today. They hear the word of God. They see the law of God, but they don't want to do it. They don't want to respond to it. And so let's look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 7. Romans 8 and verse 7. Go ahead, Pastor. Because the carnal mind that is the mind that is not led by the spirit, is mm -hmm. enmity against God. And this word enmity means uh, having a hatred, a dislike, a, a grievous dislike against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. They don't want to be subject to the law of God. Mm -hmm. Neither indeed can be. Because if we don't humble our hearts to walk in the light of what God has revealed to us, then... The Holy Spirit cannot work on our minds and our heart to give us the strength we need to be obedient to the law. If we constantly reject the law, if we constantly turn our backs on the law, then 
God cannot do for us what we can't do for ourselves. And so there is this dislike for the law. That's why many people, that's why the Bible tells us that uh, broad is the world. And many there be that find it that goes to destruction, but narrow is the way that leads to salvation. You know, mm -hmm. few there be <laughs> that are on that road. Fewer. Few, that. very few. So the majority in our society, they don't love the law of God. And because they don't love the law of God, they cannot be used by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. yes. And it is love for God. Love for God, my friends. We have to have love for God. And let me tell you another story about love. Go ahead, go ahead. I, li I like the stories. I like where we're going. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, when we, we started at a church at Mission Hope, there was someone who came, started coming to our church. Uh, we had a series and she went, we went through his studies like this. And she gave her heart to the Lord. But she said to me one day, I don't know. I hear people talking about loving God, but I'm trying to love God, but I just don't feel anything for God. How can I love God? And I said, you need to study his word. You need to submit your heart to him. You need to pray to him and talk to him and ask him to reveal himself to you. One day she came back to me and said, Pastor, I understand. How, what it means to love the Lord. Amen. I've submitted my life to him. I've been studying his word and I see the beauty in his word. I see uh, how he wants to save me in his word. I see what he has done for me and I love him so much. I can't understand how it happened, but I just know that it happened and I'm a changed person. For us to really walk in humility with the Lord and to have his mind, we need to fall in love with him. It's all about love. Just as he loves us, he wants us to reciprocate that love and love him back. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the Bible is the Bible is 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 here letting us know that through love and through the love that we give to God, we will want to be like him. We will like to be now imitators. You know, I, I, I love the, the fact that children imitate their, their parents a lot. You know, they, they, they love their parents and they imitate them. You know, mm -hmm. I remember my, uh, my aunt used to say that uh, she, she never liked that my uncle went and played baseball, but now she has two boys. And those two boys would grab sticks and they would grab little pebbles and they would go and, and try to hit it because they would see their dad, you know, try to play baseball. And now my aunt is the biggest fan of them because, you know, she sees her children and now my uncle playing baseball. So we are imitators of him. But, you know, sometimes God's law can be rather difficult if we grew up not following them. How then can we obey God's law, Pastor? Well, the thing is uh, we can't do it on our own. And Ezekiel uh, 36, 25 to 27 reveals to us what God can do for us. The Bible reads, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give to you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give you a heart of flesh. Verse 27 says as follows. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statuses and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Hmm. So here is a beautiful picture of what God does for us, just as he did mm -hmm. for that person that I spoke of earlier, mm -hmm. who wanted to love him but couldn't. But God placed the love in her, her, her heart. And so he says he wants to take out the old heart. And he wants mm -hmm. to put a new heart in there. And not only that, he wants to put a new spirit 
But first he said, I want to sprinkle clean water on you to wash you. Mm -hmm. So we are being washed on the outside and then he renews us on the inside. So we are being washed thoroughly, both inside and outside. So he yeah. gives us this new experience. Jesus himself said, you must, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Born again. You must be born. You must be born of the water and of the spirit. Here we see the water and the spirit. Sprinkle clean water on you. Amen. And I will give you a new spirit. God wants to give us a new spirit because the spirit that we have now is in rebellion against him. It is in enmity to, to the things of God. But he wants to take that out and put something new in there. And, and gives us a, give us a new experience. You know, if God's spirit is living in our hearts, then the evidence comes out in our behavior. Mm -hmm. So there are many people out there who are saying, I'm a Christian, but you see their behavior, it is worse than the people in the world. But if God's spirit is living in us, then we will see it in our behavior. The response of a grateful heart is a daily surrender to God. When that occurs, obedience to Christ is the natural result. We're able to let our light shine as a witness of the power of God to change lives. I am mm -hmm. a testimony to that. And I'm sure there are many people out there who are yes. testimonies to that. How God has changed a vile heart and has given a new experience. And he can do that for you as well. Definitely. You know, there are many, many testimonies and we could go all night talking about testimonies. You know, I could speak about well, some of my family's testimonies, some of the brothers and sisters that have had a testimony and have shared it in church. You know, I remember uh, a brother was talking to us in, in food bank last week. Remember about his testimony? Yes. He used to be how he now is. And many, many people that, uh, say i used to be this way and i thought it was impossible well let me tell you it is not impossible because if we put our efforts in god's hands that is his promise we just read it ezekiel 36 25 26 and 27 he will give us a new heart that we can keep his judgments and do them that's that's the interesting thing and he mm -hmm. will help us do them now, Pastor, this is this is this is the thing, because it is not easy for us to to follow uh, 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 God's law. You know, I I have a uh, I have a uh, when I was younger, I remember that I used to envy some people or some places for having something, and I wanted to take it for myself. You know, I wanted <laughs> to take it without with with no one's permission. You know. Or when I was younger, I used to say, why do I have to wake up so early to go to Sabbath school if I already went to school five days during the week? You know, it is not. <laughs> Yet, when we allow God to help us out, what happens? When we actually start exercising faith and letting God take over, when we finally say and do that Jesus take the wheel, what happens? It's a glorious thing. Psalm 119, verse 20. Go ahead, Pastor. My soul breaketh for the longing that it hath upon the, thy judgment at all times. My mm -hmm. soul breaketh for the longing that it hath upon thy judgments at all times. What does that mean? I just want to be with you. I just want to hear from you. I just want to uh, appreciate who you are. I just want more of you. I just want more of you. I can't. I'm always thirsty for the Lord. I'm always hungry for the Lord. That's a great desire to have. You know, I've spoken to individuals and they tell me that they, they study the Bible and they do, the more they study the Bible, the more they want to read, the more they want to read because there's this thirst that is developing and there will be there hours upon hours just reading and meditating on the word. It is a wonderful thing to walk with the Lord. He puts that joy in your heart that is beyond anything that you can you have ever experienced. And I 
pray that you will experience it by studying his word, meditating on his mm -hmm. word, loving his word. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is an awesome thing. Amen. Now, we already read the dissertation and the conclusion of uh, Solomon, and we concluded he was a very, very wise man. But what was Jesus's? summing up the dissertation you know what was the conclusion of jesus you know i always have a quote in my in in my messages if you are going to live with something live with this you know <laughs> with this because it is probably a couple of sentences that sum up everything yes let's do matthew, matthew 22 37 to 40. let's hear what that has to say The Bible says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the great commandment. Let me, let me, this is uh, 37 and 38. 38, yes. Now 39 and 40. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, Hang all the law and the prophets. And this is a summary of the Ten Commandments. The first four uh, gives our allegiance to God. Mm -hmm. we, we show our love to God. Um, the, the last six is our, our, our relationship to man. So first, we have to show our allegiance to God. Uh, there shall be no God before you. Thou shall not make any graven images and so on. You know, all those things are pointing to us uh, submitting ourselves to God. Then we come, thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal, thou shall not commit adultery. Those are things that are relational things. And so if we love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, then we will love our fellow man as ourselves. And we won't want to kill. We won't want to steal. We won't want to envy. We won't want to do any of those uh, evil things. Amen. So, yes. You know, this is, this is an interesting thing because we're talking about God's law. And many people think that God's law is something restraining, something bad. Or it doesn't let you, quote unquote, live. But let me ask you something, Pastor. How is love to God be displayed? You know, because how, how do we show love by doing this? All right. First John 5 and verse 3 gives us an indication as to how we can do about that. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. Number one, this is how we're going to show God love when we keep his commandments. And then it gives us a, a statement there that says his commandments are not grievous. They're not mm -hmm. burdensome. They're not Why? binding. Yeah. Why? Because when we love, we will delight in doing things for that person that we love. And so we will want to do everything so that we do not hurt that individual. And so uh, the bottom line is we need to love God and his commandments and they will draw us closer to his heart. Amen. All right. Now, Pastor, unfortunately, unfortunately, there are some people that uh, don't follow God's uh, commandments, but they say they do. Mm -hmm. Oh, they, they say they love God. They say, you know, I am a follower of Christ. Yet they leave, uh, they leave church or, or they go home and, and there is evident that they don't follow it and they don't obey. You know, what, what happens to those people or what, what do we take take away from that kind of people mm. it's a sad commentary because we're saying one thing and doing another mm -hmm. and so first john 2 3 to 5 first john 2 3 to 5 
All right, I figured out how to put three. Hopefully this is not too small for our audience. Let me see. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that said, I know him and keep not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keep his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. Hmm. Yes. If we, so, if we say we are following Christ and we are not following his commandments, we're actually being hypocrites. We are being liars. Yes. That's that what the text term. is saying. We're being liars. And God does not like liars. If uh, Ten Commandments, one is that thou shalt not, you know, uh, bear false witness. And so he says here that if we say we are following Christ, if we go out into the world and say we are Christians, we must live as Christians. If we go out into the world and say that we are men of God, we must live as men and women of God. You know, Gandhi once said that I love your Christ. He's a, a good man, but I don't see him in you. You, know, you say you're Christians, but I don't see him in you. And that's what many people are saying about so-called Christians today. Mm -hmm. They will love Christ, but they don't love what they see in the people that mm -hmm. say they are Christians. And yes. so they cause people to be turned off because if this is who a Christian is, then I don't want to be a part of it. <laughs> and so that is, a, that is egregious to God, you know, because he, he wants us to, to reflect him mm -hmm. and not turn people off from him. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And so if we lift Christ up in our lives, then we will draw individuals to Christ. Yes. Because of how we live. And so God doesn't want to call us a liar. So let us live for him. Amen. Truly and with a pure heart. Yes. You know, he does not want to. But he will do it if it's necessary. Yes. The Bible yeah. says, that is, what is it? Psalm uh, 25, I think is the one that says. That God, all your ways are mercy and truth. Mm -hmm. So it's 50-50. Yes, he loves you and he will take you back. But he will still tell you how it is. That's right. And because he loves you, he will tell you that you are not living to his standards. Now, the other thing that I wanted to ask you, Pastor, is we, we are describing an interesting standard. And we are uh, driving an interesting standard. And we are describing basically... Something that will happen in the last days. How are God's people described in the last days, Pastor? Uh, there are two texts here, Revelation 12 and 17 and Revelation 14, verse 12. These are prophetic uh, verses that uh, were given in the book of Revelation, pointing to the time of the end. The people that will be living in the last days just before Christ comes. And what would be the description of these individuals. And so Revelation 12, verse 17 tells us. And the Bible says, and the dragon was the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That is the first time we see it, and then Two chapters later, yes. uh, Revelation 14, 12, the Bible says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Pastor, two very interesting things that are mentioned here. The commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Yes, uh, the, as we, we have been looking at being obedient to co the commandments of God. So the people who will be living in the last days, and why we believe that this text here is talking about the people who will be living in the last days, because just after mentioning that, we see uh, in, in the book of Revelation chapter uh, 14, we see the coming of Christ to claim mm -hmm. his own, to reap the yes. world. 
And so the people who are living just before will keep the commandments, all of the commandments, not just one, not just six, not just eight, but all 10 commandments, mm -hmm. be obedient yes. to all of them in their entirety. And number two, yes. they will have the faith of Jesus. When yes. Jesus was on earth, he trusted in his father's word implicitly so that nothing could sway him from following through on being obedient to the father. And so the people who will live in the last days, and we believe we are that people living in the last days, we will have a faith that will not be deterred, not be swayed, but it will be a faith that will hold on even as the storms of life rages around us. And so as, as they rage around us, we will hold on to the truths as they are found in God. And so let us, my friends, no matter what, be obedient to God's word and trust him. And he will give us that faith so that we will not be broken in the times of the storm. Man, you know, it's, it, it's an interesting thing that at the very end, it is very simplified. Two things, the trust and following the law, having yeah. the faith of Jesus and the commandments of God. Now, Pastor, before Jesus left, uh, last question of today, before Jesus left, he gave us a request. He gave us a a, a, a a last assignment, you know, and that assignment we continue to have until today. What was the assignment that Jesus gave? Uh, they call it the Great Commission as found in Matthew chapter 28, and verse 20. Go ahead, Pastor. Teaching them to observe all things. That means God's people who are ambassadors for God will be going out and teaching others to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So everything that Christ has commanded, we will teach and we will live and we will share. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. So that's a great promise that when we go out mm -hmm. on the front lines, when we live for Christ, when we share the message, when we are obedient to his commandments, when we live and love him, he says, I will be with you even to the end of the age, end of the world. He's going to be with us. He's not going to leave us alone. And that's a great thing because nobody likes to be alone. We want to know that we have some support and he will always be there to support us with the power of the Holy Spirit in filling us and giving us the courage each day to Hold on to be obedient, to love his law, to love him, and to love others. Amen. amen, amen. Now, Pastor, the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives is always, always seeking to conform us more and more, you know, to, to prepare us, to shape us more into the image of Christ. When the Holy Spirit lives within us, his life transforms us and gives us new desires and new passions you know since the ten commandments embody the same character of god and embody himself because the ten commandments are basically a description of god's character mm -hmm. we then reflect that if we we then reflect him in our lives through the following of his commandments you know god's law may be seen as ten promises with God's spirit in you, you will not want to have other gods before you or wrong your neighbors. Pastor, do you have any closing thoughts for us this evening? One thing I want to say is that God's love will always uh, work and flow through us if we allow him. Yes. Because he... He has not just given us the Ten Commandments, given us his, his desires for our lives out of spite. I just want to punish them. So let me say they can't do this. They can't do that. <laughs> no, it is because of his great love for us. It, it all boils down to love. He loves us very much. That's why he did not spare his own son, but he delivered him up for us in you know, Romans yeah. chapter 8. 
He delivered him up. He did not withdraw his son. He did not withhold his son. But he delivered him. Why? Because of our, his great love for us. And so he wants us to reciprocate that love. Amen. And to uh, be in obedience to his will. And then he will not leave us. He will not forsake us. And then he will give us a new heart. And then he will give us the Holy Spirit. So he's giving us everything that we need. Everything Amen. that we need. So he just wants us to be obedient, to give him our will, and then he will shape and fashion us into his likeness so that we will be ready for translation, ready to be in the presence of God. I want you all, I want us all to be ready to be in the presence of God. We can't be ready if we are at enmity with the law of God, enmity to the things of God, but we can be ready if we fall in love with Christ. If we are obedient to his will, if we love his word, if we love to pray, if we love to study his word, if we love to share his word, if his Holy Spirit dwells within us and we are sprinkled, we are washed on the outside and we are cleansed on the inside, then we will be ready for glory. Amen, Pastor. You know, it, it, it could seem difficult at first. It could seem impossible. Mm could seem like it will never work but trust me when we really think and know that we want to put our trust in God knowing that only he can help us out he will indeed help us out amen us little by little or lots by lots because we have seen both you know people have changed in one month people have changed in the face of of of, of years nevertheless The changing agent behind all of that is always the Holy Spirit working through the person's will of wanting to follow Jesus. Pastor, would you please pray for all of us that are struggling, that are dealing with conforming or no, not conforming, but following and, and, and going always through what God is, is, is telling us in the Bible. All right, so let's pray together. Our dear loving Father, We are in your presence. We have been talking about you for the past hour or so. And we are so thankful. We are overjoyed to know that you are a God of love. And given, you have given us your love uh, commandments, your love principles. So that if we follow them totally in every way, we will be in accordance with your will. But we know that doing and following commandments can't save us. It is the blood of Jesus that can save us. But as we recognize the awesome gift that, that you have given to us in Jesus, then we will fall madly in love with him and all that he has done for us. And so we will now be ready to do whatever it takes because of the grace that has been given to us, free grace. We experience our, your free grace. And we respond to your free grace by being obedient to your word. To some, it may seem impossible. But you said all things are possible. All things are possible with you. To man, it may seem impossible. But all things are possible with God. Amen. And so, Father, I trust that promise. I trust the fact that you said you will not give us more than we can bear. Or whatever temptation, you will give us a way of escape or a way to bear that those temptations. So there are many people out there now who are struggling, struggling with uh, being obedient, struggling with giving up certain things that they know are not right. And, and they know that they go contrary to your desire for their lives. But I know that you can give them power. I know that you can take out that old stony heart and that you can put that heart of flesh there You can sprinkle them with water and wash them on the outside and purge them on the inside. And so, Lord, I pray that you'll forgive us of our sins. You'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You'll give us power from on high. And may we walk as children of God, men and women, walking boldly, not as hypocrites, but as true men and women of God. Thank you, because those are the individuals that you're coming back for. You're coming back for people that are without spot or wrinkle. May we be ironed.
by the power of your might. May we be washed by your blood and come out clean and pure and white and ready. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. You know, today's study was a beautiful and uh, interesting point in our Christian living. Why do we follow the loving law of God? Pastor, next week, what do we next have? Week, yeah, next week we have the Sabbath, God's sign of faith. Hmm. So we are looking forward to that one. The, Amen. The Sabbath, God's sign of faith. Amen. You know, many people have asked us already, why are we called Seventh-day Adventists? Well, this is the one. <laughs> We're going to explore that next week. Yes. Yes. Amen. All right, everybody. So by God's grace, we'll see you next week at the same time, 7 o'clock next Thursday. May God bless you. And thank you for being with us tonight. Have oh. a good night. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.